Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to Focus on Facebook. And today is December the 11th, and we are moving through the month of December with our holiday fun stuff, holiday online parties, holiday family parties, holiday get-togethers, um, Christmas shopping, just remembering the reason for the season, that if it wasn't for the birth in Bethlehem of Christ, we would not be celebrating his birth. And I know many, many people feel that the um, act of presenting a gift to family members is symbolism to the three kings coming and seeing the baby and bringing their gifts to him. So remember to be giving gifts of love, grace, no judgment, and taking care of one another and not just making it a material holiday because we need to be remembering the reason for the season every day, not just at Christmas time. So today we are on chapter 12, Replace Yourself, of the book Living the Residual Life with Michelle Schaefer. And here we go, starting to read. It is leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. And that's a statement by Tom Waters. It is very important in the business world to keep your competitive edge. If you have special skill sets or information that gives you an advantage over others, you can go far. In most cases, you are not giving away this information to your competitors voluntarily. You do everything you can to hold on to what makes you more valuable than someone else. In the world outside of network marketing, you are very cognizant of people passing you up or people taking a raise or a promotion that should have been yours. This is not what the network marketing space looks like. That way of thinking will never allow your team to grow and flourish. Network marketing teams thrive when there is a culture that allows for growth and development. There is no place for ego. Ego will hinder not only your growth, but the growth of your team. Network marketing is where you want to share every bit of the knowledge and the skill that has helped you grow your business with the people on your team. Network marketing is the place where we cheer if someone passes us up. Depending on the type of compensation plan your chosen company has, you won't be worried about losing income if someone passes you in rank or earnings. We can freely and authentically mentor others in the hopes that they will be more successful than us. It is a beautiful thing. No matter where you are currently with your leadership, you should always strive to have someone right in your hip growing with you. Your job is to seek out, build up, and support the emerging leaders that show up on your team. You want to help them develop their skills and learn to do what you are doing. This is a magical thing that sets network marketing apart from so many other professions. That's why simplicity is so important. Choose a few of the most important skills you need to learn and master them. Then begin training your partners to do the same thing. When I have been on a recruiting push, I enroll a group of new people that will get started at the same time. My goal is to get them approximately started with the help, approximately started and help them begin to develop their skills as quickly as possible. I want them to be proficient and self-sufficient in certain areas so they can start to do some things without my assistance and also begin training their new people. This is a pay it forward model. The faster I can create this chain reaction, the faster momentum will build for their team. I have found that setting clear guidelines and expectation is extremely helpful. And here's an example. I tell my newest partner to book three presentations, virtual or face-to-face -face, right away so I can train them and help them to quickly start earning in the compensation plan. I want them to win early on in their journey. Here is how my training system for newbies work. Number one, 
I will present the entire first presentation as training for them, then watch how it is done, take notes so they can grab their first few customers and business partners simultaneously. It's a win-win scenario. Number two, my new partner will actively participate in the second presentation. This will allow them to step out of their comfort zone, share their story, and present part of the presentation. Doing this helps begin stepping into a leadership role and gets their feet wet as a presenter. Number three, for the third presentation, my new business partner takes the reins. He or she will handle the entire presentation, and I will be there to support and help if they get stuck. By the time we get to the third presentation, they've had some enrollments and success. They are building their confidence and belief, and they have earned in the compensation plan. This is all by design. With them being aware that there is a limited number of times I will do the presentation for them, they are paying closer attention so they can learn the ropes. They are forced into action even if they don't feel ready. There is no better teacher than actual real world experience. This frees me up to do the same thing with my other new partners. I have found that when I stay with a new business partner too long, they begin to rely on me in unproductive ways and think they can't do what I do. This is not what we want people to feel. We want them to believe that they can do what we do and do it successfully. It is my job to nudge them along into that role gently. I continue to encourage them to take the next step. They don't need to know everything yet. They just need to know the next step. I call this spoon feeding. All too often, we try to give them so much information and it can feel like they are trying to take a drink of water through a fire hose when people feel overwhelmed or confused. The mind shuts down. You continue to empower and encourage your emerging leader to take the next step and the next and the next. I want to be clear about something that happens a lot. What began as spoon feeding and get and gentle nudging can sometimes turn into an attitude of entitlement and dragging. We must always remember that this is a partnership. You cannot do everything for people all the time. You will end up enabling them instead of empowering them. Oops. You do not want to build a dependent, lazy team. You want to build an empowered team of go-getters, independent self-starters, and leaders. I have done both. I have learned the hard way that enabling people in business does not help them. It hinders both their growth and yours. On occasion, I have broken my own rules on training and empowering, and with each time, the same result occurred. The longer I spent in newbie training mode, the less confident my new partner became in their skills. The result was they never developed a belief in themselves because as always, I was always there. When I did try to break away and nudge them to take the lead, they were either mad, hurt, or both. I was spending time with someone who had already been trained instead of training a new person. As partners, who, as partners, your people should be meeting you halfway. If they fail to meet you halfway during the training processes, and if they are unwilling to step up and participate with the actions you're suggesting, that is a clear indicator that this person is not ready to engage in the business yet fully. It is normal for them to feel fear and even be reluctant. But if they are unwilling, you must be honest with yourself about where they are at on their journey Love them and allow them to remain a part-time share of your products. Love them where they are in their journey. I have learned that what you I have learned that you match energy for energy in this business. When I find someone eager and excited who is not only willing but waiting for the next step, I will match their energy with as much training and support as they need. If a partner does not respond, if they are slow to take action, if they do not follow the system, or coaching offered, I match their energy as well. They will not get the same type of coaching or attention from me. How do you know which is, it, which is which? It's quite easy to spot the emerging leaders from the rest. They show up on calls. They are engaged with social media pages. They're in contact with you a lot. They are asking questions. They show up at events, and they are doing three-way calls 
and presentations with you. These people make themselves known with their actions. Many people will say that they want to make it happen, but fewer will show you that they want to make it happen with their efforts. Those few are the ones I'm always on the lookout for and excited to work with. My goal is always to find someone to replace me. I want to develop a lot of leaders who develop other leaders. You never want to have a team so dependent on you that they cannot stay in action unless you guide them. Your goal is to have so many leaders that at any one moment, you can be interchanged with any one of them. The way to develop these skills is to be emerging leaders, is to allow them to begin leading. Invite them to teach and train on calls or at events. Use them on a three-way call to share their story. Edify them and ask for their, their opinions. Over the years, I have asked things of my team that they feel they weren't ready for. I believed in them and their leadership, so I would encourage them to step out and try it anyway. Each time, they were so proud of themselves and pleasantly surprised with the results. Recently, I asked a newer team member to share her story at a local event. She would be standing up in front of 200 people on a stage for five minutes to share how her results were turned into revenue. She was terrified when I asked her, but she courageously said any, yes anyway. I told her to practice her presentation and time herself so she would use her five minutes fully and not go over the allotted time. She did just that. And on the day of the event, she looked amazing. She was extremely nervous and had never stood up in front of a large room like that before. I brought her up on the stage and handed her the microphone. Her hands were shaking, but she absolutely rocked it. She was poised, mm -hmm. articulate, and touched everyone in the room with her five-minute testimony. After the event, I chatted with her, and she told me that she was so proud of herself, and she had an entirely new level of confidence and belief in herself. Yes. Believe in people more than they believe in themselves. See more in people than they see in themselves. Then give them the chance to blow their minds with what they can do. Focus on finding leaders and pour into them to develop their leadership skills. Then pass the torch to them so that they can pour into the emerging leaders on their team. Remember this, you cannot take people to a place that you haven't seen. Stay focused on your progress. Are you still enrolling? Are you, are you still uh, bettering your skills? Are you becoming a better presenter? Are you rank advancing yourself? Are you rank advancing your team? Are you engaged? Are you plugged in? Are you showing up? This is a great little checklist for yourself. As you continue to lead yourself, you will naturally become better at leading others. When you are holding yourself accountable and to a higher standard, mentoring others becomes easier. You will now, you will know firsthand what it takes, what, it, what is working and what is not because you're doing it yourself. By being a driver personality type, I like to do a lot of things myself. Often I'm impatient. I'd rather get something done myself with speed instead of taking the time to show someone else how to do it properly. This is a terrible habit to have with your network marketing business. Wealth conceals itself to those unwilling to teach others, but wealth will reveal itself to those who take the time to teach others. I don't know whose quote that is, but it is so true. Leaving your ego aside, taking the time to empower and teach others will pay off in big ways. And she leaves us with, wealth conceals itself to those unwilling to teach others, but receives itself to those who take the time to teach others. So that is an incredible message that we've received from Michelle about we make sure that you teach your team the skills that you have so they can move forward without you. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself out and it's not going to help the team. It's going to hurt you and the team more than it'll help them. So next week, we're going to be on chapter 13 perfect time for us to be doing that we're going to be talking about goals so if you are closing out 2022 and you have not even taken a review of your last quarter of the month or of the last month or November even 
get with it, guys. What are you waiting for? How do you know what you're going to be doing to close out the end of the year if you haven't been looking at it and strategizing and planning and setting some focus on a goal? Because when you put your eye on the prize, you will usually win it. But if you just go with the flow and not know where you're going, how do you know you're going to get where you want to be? So I'm excited about next week where we'll talk about goals and dig in a little bit deeper to discover more about what we are doing in our business, what we're not doing in our business, and the items and the things that we need to be working on so that we can make 2023 open the doors with welcome arms and lock it through the end of the year. So thanks for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm so happy that you're here. And if you've got any questions, make sure you put your uh, your notes down in the comments. Even if it's on YouTube, I still get messages from YouTube and I'll be happy to answer your questions. If there's anything that you need me to present to you in the Focus on Facebook group, let me know. And um, if you haven't started working on your passions yet, there's content in the group, guys. Get with it. Let's start focusing on your passions so you can get into 2023 knowing exactly what your passion is and what drives you so that you can start the year out with really good momentum for success. Thanks for being here. I love you guys. Have a very, very blessed rest of the evening and start your week out with a high note. Bye for now.